morning and coming up right here on Good Morning America, we're tracking the massive winter storm and it's more than winter weather across the country with 90 million people on alert. Plus, Michael is live in Easter Island with the music, the culture and reporting on the threat from climate change, how it's impacting those famous statues and the island, plus how plastic is polluting that paradise. And we're celebrating women run businesses with a double dose of deals and steals. That's all right here on GMA. 5.57 on a very busy Thursday morning. We're still tracking storms and Stephen is watching the roads right now. Flashing lights. I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. There is still a large pond of water on the left side of the freeway in that area. Much more to come. Right now at six, storms in the area overnight. We're seeing all the pictures you've been sending in to KSAC Connect. The big hail fell across South Texas from Timberwood Park to New Braunfels down to Dilly. We're tracking on the latest on the damage with team coverage. And let's look out there with live cam and this shot kind of calm and 70 degrees. But Mike and Justin have been busy all morning tracking those overnight severe storms and looking to more severe weather this evening. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It has been a loud night for a lot of folks here in South Texas. Good morning. It is Thursday, March 2nd. Thanks for joining us this morning. And yes, a busy morning for our crew here. Let's get right to weather. Yeah, they were basically very isolated storms, but boy, did they pack a punch. Here's what it looks like right now out there at the airport. Everything's moving along very well. Plenty of uh, clouds, no rain though. And the last of the storms and this one up here has moved on basically out of our viewing area. This is of course into uh, northern Blanco County right now, and it is still producing severe weather, severe thunderstorm warning, but that is technically out of our viewing area. So no more storms around here. Hail has been the biggest issue with some of these. There's nothing else left over. Maybe another uh, couple of sprinkles out here in western uh, Kerr County, but this uh, incident is going to continue to move on out. Then we have to wait for later on today. 70 right now here in town, mid 60s in the hill country and temperatures once again are at the normal high and we're just going to go up from here today. So we've got really no more rain chances this morning and temperatures will get up into the mid to upper 70s today at noon and then we'll top off at 85 later on today. Now we will start to see more showers and thunderstorms developing in parts of the hill country late this afternoon as the front starts to work its way on through the area. High winds, high fire danger, as well as a severe threat later on tonight. We're going to get that all sorted out. But first of all, we want to talk about all those uh, hail incidences from earlier this morning as well as overnight. Justin Horn, what's the latest? It, Mike, we just got a new picture, and this is from Hines, Texas, which if you're not familiar with where that is, it's just south of Charlotte, west of Jordanton, east of Dilly. And this was in the corridor where we got that big storm. Look at the size of this hail. That's a cell phone there, uh, probably baseball size, just looking at this picture. And there was some very large hail that fell with that storm right around 1045 on the northwest side of Dilly, kind of one of our rural areas. But this is one spot that got hit with the large hail. So we know it was out there last night. Then we had other reports of smaller hail in places like northwestern San Antonio. Wasn't massive, didn't do damage or anything like that, but we did get some reports of that. If it woke you up this morning, that's what that was. And then this was a shot of the uh, bigger hell there near Dilly. Yeah, that's baseball size, and that will do some damage. Uh, still getting a few reports there out of the northwest side of Dilly with some of this larger hell. And as Mike mentioned, there's potential for a few more storms this afternoon. We'll be keeping an eye on that. But for now, let's go over to traffic and check in with Stephen on what's going on there. Well, Justin, I know you mentioned that high water that you came across along I-10. And guess what? It's still being reported by TxDOT. Let's get a wider look there at TransGuide. You can see that those those flashing lights have blocked off at least three left lanes there as traffic continues to move uh, forward in those eastbound lanes. Now, the good news is earlier we didn't see any big problems in terms of delays, but check it out now. At 6 a.m., we are starting to see a little bit more of that buildup take place along I-10 eastbound as you approach UTSA Boulevard. So give yourself time this morning. I-10, we saw plenty of uh, sheen out there earlier, but you do want to give yourself time and watch for those first responders who have blocked off those areas that could be hazardous to drive through. 
but thankfully right now it's not a big delay and hopefully we'll see some progress there a little bit later on. But unfortunately still not seeing progress here. Uh, that road debris still being reported by uh, text out along I-10 westbound near I-35. Not causing any issues, but just something to be aware of as the commute does get going here at 604. Giving you a wide look at the map here in town, it's been quiet. There's not been a whole lot to talk about in terms of issues, but we're going to have to track things closely. Uh, another thing that we've been tracking very closely are these travel times. If you are heading into San Antonio this early in the morning along I-10 westbound, well, it's still pretty green from Seguin. 29 minutes at this hour, and it's about 33 minutes along 87 northbound if you're traveling in from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, 29 minutes to the Alamo City. But let's get it back here at 10 at UTSA Boulevard. I expect that we will see those first responders out there for a little while longer, so just make sure to give them plenty of room. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Happening today, San Antonio City Council will vote on whether Rosie Castro will take over as interim District 7 council member. Rosie Castro is a civil rights activist and the mother of politicians Julian and Joaquin Castro. This comes after Anna Sandoval stepped down citing family obligations. Also today, a mass will be held for local artist Jesse Trevino, who he passed away a couple of weeks ago at the age of 76. Friends and family paid their respects last night during a rosary service at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Trevino is known for his vivid paintings around the city. Topping your morning headlines, a midair scare for passengers on a flight from here in Texas to Europe. Several people were hurt when a flight from Austin to Germany hit turbulence. The pilots making an emergency landing outside Washington, D.C. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, a mid-air scare for Lufthansa Flight 469 from Austin, Texas to Frankfurt, Germany, diverted to Dulles Airport outside Washington due to extreme turbulence. Passengers describing items tossed all over the cabin, including food trays. It was kind of like you're in slow motion that you just see everything like like in a movie where you just see everything lift and then all of, sudden, all of a sudden it just comes right back down. Lufthansa Airbus A330 experienced extreme turbulence. The FAA says the flight landed without incident, adding the crew reported encountering severe turbulence at 37,000 feet altitude over Tennessee. Seven passengers were taken to local hospitals, many more shaken up. Approximately 10 patients have been triaged. We're in the process of either obtaining refusals and or getting folks transported to the hospital shortly. It's the latest in a series of recent airline incidents. Hawaiian 35, heavy to Geneva. Uh, medical personnel uh, at the gate. Uh, yes, we do, Hawaiian 35. Dozens of people were injured in turbulence on this Hawaiian Airlines flight from Phoenix to Honolulu in December. Passengers lurching violently up and down, hitting their heads. This is the very reason that pilots like myself constantly warn you from the cockpit to keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you're in your seat, regardless of flight conditions. Because if we hit something like this and you're not strapped in, you can go flying. That same day, a United flight from Hawaii suddenly dove 1,400 feet, coming within 800 feet of the Pacific before climbing again. The cause of the nosedive not immediately clear. As for the turbulence that hit that Lufthansa flight, the FAA is investigating. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Check this out. A crew for SpaceX and NASA is now spending its first morning in outer space. Just after midnight last night, the crew six team blasted off for the International Space Station. Comes after Monday's failed attempt. The launch part of NASA's commercial, NASA's commercial crew program, which sends astronauts to the ISS on private spacecraft. Right now, we're at 607, 70 degrees. We are not the only ones dealing with weather issues this morning from coast to coast. 100 million Americans are in the path of storms. Coming up later this morning on GMA, they'll take a look at the areas that could be hit the hardest. Outside with live cam hit very hard overnight. These storms were, according to our weather team, few, far between, and very fast. But they say we might not be done yet. Another round is in the South Texas forecast. Details to come. Time check, 6-11. Let's get a quick look around town because it does look like we have a stalled vehicle reported here along 281 at near Hildebrand. It's not really causing many issues, but check out the traffic. We're seeing a lot more folks out there. So we'll take a closer look and talk to our friends at TransGuy to find out exactly what is going on out there. But it does appear to be a stalled vehicle from what we are seeing here on the TransGuy camera. A Texot Hero truck could be out there on the scene. Uh, do want to bring your attention here, and I have to talk to our friends at TransGuy a little bit later because a crash has been reported along 35 southbound near South 
Cross Boulevard. Now it's early enough to where we're not seeing big delays just yet, but still be on the lookout as the commute does get rolling here. Uh, progress here, road debris that has been lingering around looks like it's been picked up near I-10 westbound near 35, so I'm not going to be too worried about that. And as we take one last jump over here to I-10 eastbound, that high water that has been reported from uh, Transguide and TxDOT has uh, no longer been being listed. So that looks like to have been resolved, so better news to report out there. A wide view of the metropolitan area does show plenty of green out there still. The metropolitan area really has been uh, pretty quiet in terms of what we have been seeing on the roadways. But thankfully, uh, again, first responders here have resolved some of the issues, and it does look like we may have seen progress with that stalled vehicle along 281. All right, thank you, Stephen. It was a bumpy night for quite a few folks, uh, so all hands on deck this morning. Justice joining us here at the desk. Yeah, it started late last night. Adam was here, I know, into the, the wee hours of the morning when those storms started to pick up. And boy, I mean, Dilly, first of all, yep. just got yeah. hammered. That was where the biggest hail was. And these storms were isolated. Very few people got hail, but those who did, it was it was sizable. We have some pictures to show you on our KSAC Connect. And this is, by the way, the best way for you to share any photos you have with us. As long as you do it safely, you can send in those weather photos and we'll show them on air and we can show them online as well. We've got an article on KSAT.com right now showing all the pictures. But these were some of the larger uh, hailstones that we saw. I want to start here. You can see the hail just really piling up here against this palm tree. That's small hail, but there was a lot of it. And uh, we got a few reports of this on the uh, northwest side of San Antonio. And then he gets in, into some of the bigger hail near Jordanton. This was the same storm that moved through Dilly, producing some big hail there. And then uh, this was down in Hines, Texas. We just showed you uh, kind of an up-close shot of the hailstones. But look at that. That looks like a porch. And, man, those are some massive hailstones that are coming down there. That's the kind of hail that will do some damage. And uh, if you were curious, this is just east of Dilly, south of Jerdenton, where this picture was taken there in Hines. And this is another shot of it with the cell phone. It gives us some perspective there of just how big this hail was. Uh, that storm uh, was uh, gone by about 11 p.m., but not before doing uh, some, some damage, at least in spots. Most of the storms have calmed this morning, too. But we're going to watch for a couple more storms this afternoon, Mike, uh, as, as the front comes in. Yeah, this afternoon and this evening as that front moves on through here. And I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, Justin, but even seeing when you see the hailstones that are the size of baseballs and comparing it to that cell phone, it never ceases to amaze me that something that big is falling from the sky. All right, here's a look at the radar right now, and everything in our area is gone. There may be, well, actually a couple of uh, leftover little showers there in extreme northwestern Kerr County, and this cell, which moved through and dumped the more hail right there, right around Fredericksburg earlier this morning, that's continuing to work its way up toward Marble Falls. There are no warnings in effect as of right now, but that uh, system is still producing some hail there. And of course, that is well to the uh, northwest of Austin. So tranquil around town. There may be some spots and on the uh, far northwest side where there's some standing water from some of those storms that moved through and dumped a little bit of that hail that that Justin was just talking about mid upper 60s, low 70s around the area this morning. So these temperatures are at or above what the normal high is right now. And of course, the dew points remain extremely high. And there's the dryer air well out to the uh, northwest of us and this is what is going to be coming on in here now it looks like the timing of this front has slowed just a bit it looked like initially it was going to be coming through here in town about dinner time now it's going to be into the uh, early evening hours so at 6 30 still have plenty of humidity around here wind is out of the southeast then the front moves on through and winds pick up out of the northwest obviously it's going to be windier first in the hill country and we're going to see the dry air move into the hill country just bone dry air and some of the strongest winds we've seen around here in a long long time so we've got clouds left over this morning by late this afternoon then we've got more of those uh, showers starting to develop being pushed out ahead of that front and even a few thunderstorms then those are going to continue to move through into the early evening hours. Some of those are going to be on the strong, potentially severe side. All this will continue to work its way to the east, and then we will start to clear on out by late tonight. Still very windy in the overnight hours. Now, as the storms move through, there is the chance for some, like I said, to become strong to potentially severe high winds other than the winds in behind the front, as well as more hail. And it's the isolated to even a few scattered ones covering most of the kind of northeastern two thirds of our viewing area. And the majority of the area is under the threat of some sort of severe weather 
And that's going to be later on uh, tonight and then in the overnight hours. Plus, we have the red flag warnings. Now, this goes into effect at noon, obviously, first of all, out there in the hill country when the uh, front moves on through. And then up until 3 o'clock tomorrow morning, wind advisories on top of that. It is going to be blustery overnight. So garbage cans. Um, furniture, outdoor furniture cushions, things like that. You're definitely going to want to bring those things in because they are going to be in your neighbor's yard and down the block. So tomorrow we drop down about 10 degrees. We're still going to be on the above normal side all the way through the weekend, then back to the 80s. Low temperatures, and this is a good way of indicating kind of what the humidity is, will be dropping down closer to normal readings in the upper 40s, both tomorrow or all three days, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. Then low temperatures come back up as we go into the first part of next week. That's going to be a good indication of uh, more humidity. There's the low, which is moving on through here. That that's what's going to pull the front down through, and then we do get that taste of some cooler or somewhat cooler air, at least not in the upper 80s anymore for the weekend. And then we see the humidity come back in here as that next low approaches. What's going to be interesting is to see what happens with that, because this long range computer model has that thing really digging huge trough out there to the west of us. So it'll be interesting to see what actually transpires week from now with that. So that may actually pull down some much uh, colder air, but again, still a little more than a week away. Got to see how that kind of kind of hashes out there as time goes on. 87, excuse me, 77 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature makes it up to 85. Storms will start to develop out to the west. Wind is going to start to shift around here in town. It's going to be windy later on in the evening hours and then overnight. Very, very windy conditions. We got to watch out for strong, not only the strong winds, but also potentially severe storms and then windy starting off tomorrow morning. Good looking weekend, however. So, uh, of course, Adam, Mia, I think Sarah's working today, too. We're going to be watching that later on this evening. So it is, it's, I mean, wind is definitely going to be an issue, but can't discount the storm issue. And from our overnight storms, we're now starting to get images uh, in yes. of storm damaged vehicles. We're going to have more of that coming up right here on GMSA. Time now, 619 and 70 degrees for now. Just ahead, the California Fertility Center facing a lawsuit for implanting an embryo that tested positive for a deadly cancer. That's next in your GMA First Look. The lights change how everything looks. It's hard to find our house. When Tony Kushner and Steven Spielberg wrote the Oscar-nominated movie The Fablemans, who did most of the typing? Kushner is up for two Oscars for the film, Best Original Screenplay and Best Picture. The film up for seven Academy Awards. And he says he and Spielberg wrote the story on Zoom while stuck inside their home. I'm a much better typer than Stephen is. I'm not a great typist, but uh, Stephen really isn't fast. So I did all the typing, but he could see what I was doing. And uh, we were on Zoom so we could look at each other, and we did it um, three days a week, four hours a day for two months, and we finished the screenplay. <laughs> We'll see if he and Spielberg and the Fablemans win any Oscars March 12th on ABC. Michael B. Jordan! Hollywood's newest star, Michael B. Jordan. He got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame Wednesday. Growing up in Newark, New Jersey, the idea of receiving an honor like this was like a dream. But I've always been a dream chaser, you know, never been afraid of hard work. Jordan directed and stars in Creed 3, which is in theaters this weekend. Rock and rolling all night and partying every day is officially coming to an end in December. KISS announcing the dates and locations for the band's final shows on their end of the road tour, which they say is their last tour ever. It'll end with a two-night stand at New York City's Madison Square Garden, December 1st and 2nd, just blocks from where the band was born 50 years ago. Unfortunately, this crime clashed with the presence of Benoit Blanc. And happy birthday, Benoit Blanc, the former James Bond. Knives Out star Daniel Craig is 55 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Numbers move you, but some can stop you in your tracks, like the tens of thousands of people who were diagnosed with certain HPV-related cancers. For most people, HPV clears on its own. But for those who don't clear the virus, it can cause certain cancers. 
Gardasil 9 is a vaccine given to adults through age 45 that can help protect against certain diseases caused by HPV, including cervical, vaginal, vulvar, anal, and certain head and neck cancers, such as throat and back of mouth cancers and genital warts. Gardasil 9 doesn't protect everyone and does not treat cancer or HPV infection. Your doctor may recommend screening for certain HPV-related cancers. Women still need routine cervical cancer screenings. You shouldn't get Gardasil 9 if you've had an allergic reaction to the vaccine, its ingredients, or are allergic to yeast. Tell your doctor if you have a weakened immune system, are pregnant, or plan to be. The most common side effects include injection site reactions, headache, fever, nausea, dizziness, tiredness, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and sore throat. Fainting can also happen. Help protect what counts. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about Gardasil 9. In this morning's GMA First Look, an IVF tragedy. My sole life purpose was to have a baby that I didn't pass this gene on to. Melissa and Jason Diaz now raising a son with a deadly hereditary cancer gene the couple had sought fertility treatment to avoid. They are now suing California company HRC for allegedly transferring an embryo that had tested positive for diffuse gastric cancer. And then they say the company falsified medical records in an attempted cover-up. Melissa and Jason say their son will Will likely need his entire stomach surgically removed as early as age 15. We followed every step possible so I mean, that I never would have thought that we would be in the situation and I never would have thought that you know my son would have this this gene now. And we'll have much more on the IVF lawsuit coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA first look. I'm Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Tonight, our Spurs are hoping for another W. They are finally back here at home as they take on the Indiana Pacers after the rodeo road trip. Tip-off is set for 7.30 tonight at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs go. Time now, 625 and 70 degrees for now. Let's look out there with Transguide looking over at Highway 281 and Hildebrand. Things are moving in this shot this morning, but we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos with the latest on our roadways. We are starting to see more images of the damage from the storms overnight, and we are seeing all the pictures you have been sending into Case at Connect. Big hail fell across South Texas from Timberwood Park to New Braunfels to Dilly. We are tracking the latest on the damage with team coverage. Yeah, well, you see some more of the damage down near Dilly coming into our newsroom. Outside live right now with live cam over by the airport. Uh, calm right now. We could see another round of storms later today. We'll have much more coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday the 2nd. March 2nd. Thanks for joining us. A busy weather morning mm -hmm. after severe storms moved through overnight and hell lots of places and some of that damage. It's really significant. Yeah, I mean, we had again, the, the storms are basically few and far between, but boy, oh boy, did they pack a punch and uh, Justin Orrin's going to have more on some of those hail images in just a moment. First of all, it's nice to say things have finally settled down. There is nothing in our area. This uh, this was the latest severe storm that moved through Fredericksburg, dumped some hail there, continuing to move <laughs> off to the north of Austin. No more warnings are in effect as of right now. There may be a leftover little shower right there in in uh, extreme western Kerr County, northwestern Kerr County, sliding up to the northeast. But elsewhere, that's it. Now, we did have some uh, pretty good storms that moved through northern Bear County, and they dumped a lot of rain, so there may be some ponding on the road. So Stephen's going to have more on that coming up. Once again, temperatures just like yesterday, mid-upper 60s, low 70s. We're at the normal high right now. So the storms are gone warm and humid and it's going to stay breezy, warm and very humid today. And then that front's going to move through. We'll start to see some storms developing out in the hill country late this afternoon and in toward dinner time. Front comes through in the early evening hours here in town, obviously sooner in the hill country. It is going to be extremely windy, gusts up to 50 miles per hour. We'll also have those storms which will come on through here and they will continue off to the east, but we're still going to be on the lookout for some potentially strong severe storms even here in town throughout a good chunk of the area. We're going to have the the outline for the uh, storm prediction center with the isolated two potentially uh, scattered severe storms. Then tomorrow a very windy start in the early morning hours and then a gorgeous day. Good looking weekend. All those details and we'll tell you about all. We've got three different advisories posted for later on today for much of our area. Going to go through that in just a couple of minutes. Right now Justin Horn with some of those uh, KSAC Connect pictures. And hey Mike the, the situation last night 
tonight was so that if a, if a storm were to develop, there was some good energy for it to work with, and that's exactly what happened. We got a pretty healthy storm that came through the Dilly area, put down some big hail, and then we had a couple other storms develop that would uh, put down some sizable hail as well. This is Fair Oaks Parkway and I-10. Uh, they said this woke everyone up. Some pretty sizable hailstones there. Heavy rain, winds, and up to two inch hail out there at Fair Oaks Ranch. So great photo. Thank you for submitting that one. This is another shot at Timberwood Park. A little larger than quarter size. And by the way, it's always great to have a reference when you're sitting in these pictures so we know just exactly how large the hail is. But uh, that'll do a little bit of damage. It can. And then this is the monster hail that we had down in Hines. This was the same storm that came through Dilly past uh, just south of Jordanton. And this was the result. Probably baseball size hail here. That's a cell phone, I believe, and you can get sort of a reference here just how large these hailstones were. So it was a busy night last night. Again, there is a threat for a couple more storms later this afternoon. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Most of the rain has moved out of San Antonio. It has moved out of San Antonio and the roads are drying up. So let's check in on traffic now with Stephen with the latest there. Yep, that's right, Justin. Uh, as we were told you earlier, there was some high water reported near 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Don't worry, that's already cleared out. And you can see now traffic is picking up in certain areas of town. 410 at e Old Pearsall Road. We did have at least one major crash that was reported in the early hours of the morning. But roads still appear damp near 10 at UTSA Boulevard. And you want to be careful as the commute does get rolling here because, uh, again, uh, commute is starting to get a little bit busier out there. But thankfully, no major issues are being reported. However, do have a crash has been uh, listed here along I-10 eastbound at Northwest Parkway. This is just before Days of Allah, or just after, I should say. If you're traveling along I-10 eastbound, you have to watch out. I'll get our friends at Trans Guide on the phone to see if we can get a shot of the conditions out there. But overall, the morning here in town is off to a pretty quiet start. We're going to start to see a little bit of a buildup right there along US-90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castroville. So if you have to head out right now, this would be the perfect opportunity to do so. No major slowdowns just yet, but 281 North at Loop 1604 you can see traffic's picking up in certain some of these trans guide cameras. We'll continue to track things closely and have those updates throughout the morning. Guys. Thank you, Steve. And we've been telling you about the scattered storms overnight, which pummeled some South Texans with hail large enough to batter cars and trucks. Katrina Weber is live on the outskirts of Dilly near I-35 and mile marker 86. Katrina, what are you seeing out there? Well, Stephanie, we are seeing lots of broken dreams built on this broken glass that we have here all along this parking lot. Nothing but broken windows like these uh, that you see right here just busted out. Uh, people here tell me that they woke cloud storm with what they described as baseball or softball sized hail falling out of the sky. This was around 11 o'clock last night. And then this is what they see this morning as uh, daylight is starting to come about is that they have all this damage done. Now this uh, little community right here is called Dilly Lodge. And a lot of people who live here work in the oil fields. So they're waking up early to try to get to work. And there's nothing but damage. This area of Dilly Is some emails from people here late last night saying the very same thing and we came out here and this is exactly what we see. I had a chance to talk to Dilly police and they say that they also got calls about 11 o'clock last night from people on the highway on I-35 who were passing through Hail. So they were very busy rushing out uh, to handle those calls, as well as calls from people here on the outskirts of town. They say, though, that storm lasted for all of about 10 minutes. But, of course, a lot more uh, time will be spent trying to re make repairs on all this damage. Reporting live in Dilly, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12. All right, Katrina, thank you. Now to Pennsylvania, where a man is facing charges after an explosive device was found on an aircraft happened after his bag triggered an alarm at Lehigh Valley International Airport. The FBI says the suspect, Mark Muffley, checked a suitcase Monday for a flight heading to Florida. Officials located a suspicious item inside the suitcase that appeared to be a live explosive. The FBI says the bag triggered an alarm. Sources tell ABC the device was not operational and was not constructed to go off in flight. Time now, 636 and 70 degrees for now. Important news if you're looking to make a good impression at work. After the break, how to get noticed by your boss in all the right ways. Team coverage continues here on KSAT of strong to severe storms overnight. And our weather team says we might not be done yet. Look for more coming up right here on GMSA.
Hi, welcome back at 639. Everyone wants to create a good image at work, but sometimes your efforts can come across as disingenuous if you're not careful. Leslie Hudson tells us how to get on your boss's good side without being a suck up. Appear to be. Chances are you've known a workplace schmoozer, someone who lays it on thick when it comes to kissing up to the boss. I remember just thinking to myself, how do they go to sleep at night? They just like think they are the mini boss. They do anything. They'll buy the teacher gifts, do all their work. So how can you promote yourself more without being a suck up? Experts say do it in a way that doesn't only benefit you. Your goal is to exhibit what you are capable of, the contributions and value add that you bring. Make sure you include the accomplishments of the team, not just you. Some other ways to impress your boss, offer to take on more responsibilities. Also, be eager to learn new things. For example, you can offer to attend an educational conference to gain more knowledge about your position. Always be punctual for work and meetings and dress the job you want, not the one you have. Also, being a problem solver will also make you valuable to your manager. Lastly, take responsibility for your job. This involves looking for ways to improve your workplace and pitching ideas whenever you can. I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. All right, helpful tips there. Let's get a look now. Time check at 641 here in town and we see 35 at Widener. Things are moving and really that's all that we have to report on at this point. 35 at San Marcos, you can see that we do have a lot more folks out there. We have entered morning rush, but thankfully no major issues, at least here in town in the metropolitan area. You can see 37 at Fair Avenue. Both those north and southbound lanes getting busier, but not too bad. Uh, unfortunately, we still have this crash listed though along I-10 eastbound at Northwest Parkway. This is just after days of Olive Road. It's it's not causing any issues for drivers, so I'm not really too concerned about it, but hopefully before the show wraps up, we will see that scene already wrapping up as well. Giving you a wide view of the metropolitan area, it is the same story at this point, at least here in town, guys. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of that buildup, as I mentioned, we would expect to see along US 90 as you travel eastbound from Castroville, and a little bit of more of that along 35 southbound as you approach Live Oak, uh, just outside Loop 1604. But that's always expected. Uh, again, things weren't too bad here in town, but we did have some high water that was reported that was along I-10 East as you were heading toward UTSA Boulevard. And I know, Justin, that was something that you said you came across a little bit earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. Always a problem area yeah. right there where the water collects. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Can't remember the last time we saw baseball size hail basically yes. around here. It's been a while. You know, we, we could use the rain, not the severe weather, right. but unfortunately one comes with the other this time mm -hmm. of year. Uh, there was some sizable hail last night. If you're watching from San Antonio, you're probably thinking, wait, what? Uh, it hailed last night? Well, not here in town. We did have some reports of some small hail on the northwest side, but the massive hailstorm was down near Dilly, and it produced hail like this. This was near Hines, which is uh, east of Dilly. And you can see just how large that hail was. That's a cell phone there for comparison. We did have other uh, reports of hail, though, some smaller hail, this around San Antonio. Uh, hard to see exactly what size that was, but uh, we aren't getting any reports of damage here around town. And then I want to show you some of the rainfall. I mentioned we do need the rain, so this was good. This was in Jordanton, a little over an inch. And there were parts of San Antonio that did pick up some rainfall overnight with some thunderstorms, so we like that. The problem is... We'll have the opportunity for a couple more strong storms this afternoon and then some gusty winds and fire danger showing up too. So to talk all about that, let's get over to Mike now for what will be a busy day. Yeah, later on this afternoon, it is definitely going to be very, very windy. And then especially going on into tonight ahead of that front moving through here, the winds will also uh, start to pick up. As far as radar right now, nothing in our area proper. Now, this is with the latest storm that was producing some of the severe weather right there around Fredericksburg, Eastern Gillespie County earlier this morning. That has gotten on out of here and things have definitely kind of settled down. You know, when you think about those those hailstones that were the size of baseballs and think how strong the wind were because the lift in those storms going straight up, keeping those things suspended so more and more ice can build up and build those hailstones up. Extremely powerful storms, but again, they were few and far between. Uh, we've got temperatures, very warm, humid, don't need a jacket this morning, and throughout the rest of today, humidity will be sticking around here. As far as the timing of the front, uh, we're still having dew points in the mid upper 60s, even by about dinner time. Then the front moves on through. Obviously, it's going to come through the hill country sooner. And when that moves through, humidity is just going to drop like a rock. It is going to be very windy. 
uh, outdoor furniture cushions, garbage cans, anything that is not anchored down, you're going to want to put inside because it is definitely going to be blowing around later on today. And this is going to be the situation in through early tomorrow morning. As far as the strong, strong winds, it'll be strongest up through uh, before we go on the air tomorrow morning, but still very breezy uh, throughout the, the morning hours. Then it's going to settle down. So here's what it looks like throughout the afternoon. We'll still keep some clouds around here, a little bit of sunshine mixed on in here. And then there's those uh, showers and storms starting to develop late this afternoon going into dinner time. And some of those storms may become on the strong to potentially severe side. High winds and hail winds other than along the front will be the, the issue with some of these storms. And they will continue to work their way off to the east. Of course, the severe threat does exist isolated to just scattered severe storms throughout much of the area. The greatest threat is going to be in the hill country and then further north of there. And then on top of that, we have got the red flag warnings that go into effect noon until three o'clock tomorrow morning for the western half of our ear area. And then also wind advisories on top of that. Again, winds are going to be gusting uh, 45, 50 miles per hour, even stronger than that at times. Here's the uh, satellite radar picture going back 12 hours. And again, some of these uh, cells, they were very few and far between, but they packed a punch and they were just screaming up to the northeast, moving at about 50 miles per hour out just to the west of us. There's the upper low and this is a snow producer out there in the higher elevations, but that is what is going to be driving the front on through here and that will pull down not necessarily colder air, just allowing temperatures to get back down to normal. But I mean, a huge contrast around the, the country, 70 here in town, 12 below zero at International Falls. That's the actual air temperature. But again, the way the, the air is flowing around here, the upper level steering winds, this is kind of the dividing line right here. And that's keeping all that really cold stuff up there to the north. That low will move across the area. And that's what's going to pull that front on through here. And then in behind that, we are going to have good looking weekend. More humidity builds back in the first part of next week and then looks like another pretty decent front by the end of next week. 77 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 85 later on today. We'll start to see those storms develop in the hill country late this afternoon. And it, wind will pick up out of the south southeast ahead of the front. Then it shifts around very, very windy in behind that front 75 tomorrow after starting off at 48. Nice looking weekend, cool morning, warm afternoon, little above normal, plenty of sunshine, more humidity starting off next week. So yeah, get ready for this afternoon and tonight. What a night tonight, uh, last night. And mm -hmm. again, be ready folks. Yeah. And that's going to be more widespread, obviously, because mm -hmm. everybody's going to be affected by these strong winds. Yeah. Well, at least the weekend looks good after all this. Right. Thank you, Mike. 647, 70 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning and coming up right here on Good Morning America, we're tracking the massive winter storm and it's more than winter weather across the country with 90 million people on alert. Plus, Michael is live in Easter Island with the music, the culture and reporting on the threat from climate change, how it's impacting those famous statues and the island, plus how plastic is polluting that paradise. And we're celebrating women run businesses with a double dose of deals and steals. That's all right here on GMA. Search for Love is a free tennis clinic put on by a group of local high school students. I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA, why they want to share their love for tennis. People here in Dilly are waking up to what amounts to a very destructive hangover courtesy of nature. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber in Dilly, and this is what people are finding. Broken windows, busted out windows on their cars, all from a powerful storm that came through about 11 o'clock last night. And we checked in with uh, Dilly police and they say they have several calls. They had several calls last night from people who were just driving on I-35 uh, trying to go through town and they got hit with the hail that also caused all of this damage. All along this parking lot you see big pieces of glass like this as a result of these busted out windows a lot of people who live in this community which is called uh, dilly lodge they work in the oil fields and so they get up really early to go to work they got up and this is what they found that before they could even get started with their day they have to figure out how to make repairs on all of this uh, damage that was done but according to police the good news is that there were no injuries reported Reporting from Dilly, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
This morning, President Biden taking a victory lap after the largest manufacturer of insulin in the U.S. announced that diabetics who use its insulin should now expect to pay no more than $35 a month for the life-saving medication. We finally beat Big Pharma because we stuck together. President Biden praising the move by drug maker Eli Lilly, highlighting the fact that last year he signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act, which caps insulin prices for seniors on Medicare at $35 and has spent months calling on pharmaceutical companies to also lower prices for everyone else. The president suggesting Eli Lilly's decision could be a game changer. 35 bucks, but guess what that means? Every other company making insulin is going to have to lower their prices to 35 because they can't compete. Out of the nearly 8.5 million Americans who use insulin, nearly 3 million rely on Eli Lilly products. And as prices for the life-saving medication have skyrocketed, many diabetics have been forced to make dangerous decisions to save money. He would be able to successfully do what one-fourth of all type 1 diabetics do, and that was ration his insulin until payday. And unfortunately, he lost that that game of Russian roulette, I guess. A recent poll by the Kaiser Family Foundation found that a slight majority of Americans want Congress to put capping insulin costs on its list of top priorities. We're doing this completely voluntarily because it's, it's time and it's the right thing to do. And President Biden, as recently as this week, called out Republicans for blocking his proposal to extend a $35 insulin cap to everyone. This could potentially become a campaign issue if the president decides to join the 2024 presidential race. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. We are approaching five minutes till seven. Go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Well, here in town, really, there weren't a lot of issues, guys. Uh, we did have high water that was reported along I-10 eastbound near UTSA Boulevard, but that has already cleared out, and you can see 35 at San Marcos. Traffic is really just picking up at this hour, and that's what we can expect now that we are at the start of morning rush. 281, you can see traffic is also making their way through there without any trouble, but be on the lookout. Slowdowns are expected. In fact, that's what we're starting to see more of, especially if you're traveling along 281 southbound from Bulverde, 33 minutes to the Alamo City, and it looks like we just went back into the green along I-35 with 35 minutes to the Alamo City. Justin. Stephen, thank you. Viewers have been helping us tell the story this morning of the hail that fell last night and early this morning. Northern parts of Bear County got some hail. We know about the damage down there in Dilly. You just saw that with Katrina. This is just one example of a great photo sent in here and the hail piling up there near a palm tree. We had some larger, head, uh, larger hail down near Jordanton. You can see just how large it was. Again, it did do some damage. This was isolated, but the uh, folks who saw it probably had a rude awakening overnight. Again, there is a small, small chance for some more severe storms this afternoon and then we get some gusty winds after that mike yeah with that front moving on through here and uh, as of right now things have obviously as we talked about definitely settled down got a lot of clouds out there very warm very humid and we are going to be seeing 85 for a high temperature the wind will eventually late this afternoon tonight shift around we will start to see the wind shift first of all in the uh, hill country and there's the severe threat most of the area is under at least the threat for an isolated or scattered severe storm most of that further up to the north and northeast red flag warnings as well as wind advisories. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks, guys, for the hard work this yes, morning. Yes, thank you so much. And we'll be busy again. Yep, we'll be having updates throughout the day. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe out there. We'll see you at 9.